Hello and welcome back to The Connect. My name is Tamika Williams and I am a school social worker for Metro Nashville Public Schools. MMPS school social workers partner with students and families and help connect them to appropriate resources both inside and outside of school and also provide counseling to students during the school day. My school social work intern, Ms. Hannah Gibson and I prepared this presentation for you. We want to thank you for joining us for today's session entitled Stop the Silence in honor of Self-Injury Awareness Day. Today we'll discuss self-injury, also known as self-harm, and share healthy alternatives to self-harming behaviors. So what is self-injury or self-harm? Self-injury can be described as any behavior where someone causes harm to him or herself, usually as a way to help cope with difficult or distressing thoughts and feelings. Self-injury usually takes place in the form of burning, cutting, or scratching, but it's not limited to only these behaviors. Self-injury is an unhealthy way of coping with stressors. Many may ask, why would someone want to self-injure or self-harm? There may be many reasons, and some may include to make themselves feel something when they feel empty or numb inside, to block upsetting memories, to show that they actually need help, maybe to release strong feelings that overwhelm them, such as anger, loneliness, or hopelessness. Others may do it to punish themselves or to feel a sense of control when they don't feel like they have control in any other area of life. We all need healthy ways to cope with the hard times in our lives. So now we are going to discuss strategies to overcome self-harming tendencies. The first one is to confide in a trusted adult or someone that you feel comfortable talking with. The next one is to talk to your school counselor or school social worker. They're both trained mental health professionals that will help you process your stress and trauma, help you develop positive coping strategies, help you build self-esteem, provide a safe, non-judgmental environment for you to share your feelings, and help you build positive relationship skills. The next one is to identify your triggers. Triggers are those behaviors, emotions, and or situations that may cause us to respond irrationally. Tracking triggers can be extremely helpful in managing and stopping self-injury. The last strategy that we'll discuss today to help overcome self-harming tendencies is to find new coping techniques. I'll only share a few aloud, but feel free to utilize as many healthy replacement behaviors as you need from this list. If you self-harm to express pain and intense emotions, you could listen to music that expresses what you're feeling. If you self-harm to calm and soothe yourself, you could massage your neck, hands, and feet. If you self-harm because you feel disconnected or numb, you could hold an ice cube in the crook of your arm or leg. If you self-harm to release tension or vent anger, you could rip something up like sheets of paper or a magazine. We hope that this session on self-injury awareness has been helpful for you. In closing, we ask that if you or someone you know needs help or is in crisis, please take note of the resources on this page that can be helpful in working through it. We'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at MNPS Social Work and at MNPS Trauma Team. Thank you for listening.